Hey everyone, got a special treat for you today because I am here with Dylan and Tommy hey. from Jasco Games who are going to be showing us Evil Dead 2, the board game. I can't believe I actually had to look at that. But uh, this is, I'm assuming, a board game based on the Evil Dead 2. It certainly is, yes. This is actually a, uh, a recovery game. It was a game that uh, was once kicked before and it didn't quite uh, work out so well. And uh, there was a lot of backers out there that... Uh, we're never going to see the light of day with this game, and so uh, Lynn Vander Studios here teamed up with Jasco, and uh, we came together with the licensor, and we put together what was called the Kickstarter Heartthrob campaign, where the Kickstarter campaign that goes off creates this crazy, fun, really freshly designed game where we all donated our time and effort to create uh, the game, and if once the Kickstarter was hit, all of the previous backers, as well as the new backers, got their game. Nice! And so, yeah, this is Evil Dead 2 the board game. It is as crazy and chaotic as the show. Hmm. It is deadite and funny as it can be. And uh, for mechanics and stuff, if you'd like to dig into that, I'm going to refer you to this lovely, lovely gentleman right here oh, who wheels the chainsaw no better than, uh, than Ash himself. <laughs> I, I certainly try. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to point out about this, actually, is, is that if you... Ha have you seen Evil Dead 2? Um, not in its entirety. Okay. I did watch a lot of it like this. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, for the fans who have seen this, mm -hmm. this map is actually wow. as close as a perfect representation of it as we could make. Nice. Our our art our art director went through and actually watched scene by scene to make sure that the couch is in the right place, that the doilies are on the right tables. <laughs> so it's already, even before you begin the game, a great callback to the movie. Of course, you don't have to have to be a fan of Evil Dead 2 to actually enjoy the game. This is, you know, your standard, I guess you would call it your standard zombie survival style game, you know? Okay. Um, but of course, it's a zombie survival game with a twist. Yeah, there's a heck of a twist to it. So. I think the first thing that we should start with is everyone should take one corruption card. I'll take a card. Okay, here you go, sir. Do you see these? See, now, here's the thing. You're not allowed to look at it. Oh, oh no. So when we start the game, you actually don't know whether or not you are a human or whether or not you are a deadite player. Okay. So not only is your role hidden from the other players, your role is hidden by yourself. That's going to make it a little more challenging. Yes. <laughs> Your objective is to wander around, and as you wander around, you go through and you search for, for items in the house and in the surrounding area. These items can help you with combat and things like that, but ultimately, what we are searching for are the pages of the Necronomicon. Ah, okay. Okay. Now, as you will note on the map, we have this track up here. Yes. Now, depending upon the number of players, tells you how many pages of the Necronomicon you mm. need to either seal the portal okay. or summon a Kandarian demon. Okay. If you are a human player, you are trying to seal the portal. If you are a Deadeye player, you are trying to summon the Kandarian demon hordes. Question? Yes. Sure. Now, if I am not sure of my role, how do I know which one I am trying to achieve? Excellent I'm question. Very glad you asked <laughs> yeah. this. Because right. at the beginning of the game, we're all on the same team, theoretically. Okay. We think, we but think. we're not quite sure. Okay. Therefore, we are. Okay. However, any time you happen to gain a second corruption card, and I'll explain how you gain more briefly, sure, sure. now you may check what it is. Oh, just the new one? No, all of them. Oh, okay. okay. So when now you, you know what you are. Okay, once you accumulate more than one. Now, alternatively, the first time you pick up a Necronomicon page, uh -huh. you then get to see what you are. Okay. So all players, because of the probability, you assume that you're all human because uh -huh. it is what is most likely. But they might not be hindering each other too much yet, and you might actually have a spy among the midst. And you're like, oh, here, you can pick up that page, it's fine, and you're secretly helping the enemy. Okay. That's a really sneaky way to introduce that kind of traitor mm -hmm. element into it. Yes. Us. I'm just out of curiosity. I wonder what we are. <laughs> oh, see, I'm human. Oh, whew, thank goodness. <laughs> and we do have a dead item. The dead item. Now, what I will point out is, is that, like in many traitor hidden role mechanics games, if you have multiple cards, if one of them says you're a dead item, you're a dead item. Mm. Okay. It is possible to gain multiple dead item cards, but mm -hmm. it's very important you actually only reveal one when you choose to reveal it. You are welcome to continue to play as a human. Now, there are certain things that you do as you move around, where, for example, if you try to summon the demon, it's pretty obvious, and then you have to reveal your card. Mm -hmm. okay. If you attack another player, you have to reveal your card. Yeah. However, also, every turn, 
we're drawing event cards. Okay. These event cards, sometimes we're lucky and nothing happens. Hooray. They, they, they tend to shake up the game. These are the, this is the game's way of, of pushing back and, and populating and giving the players some hard time to predict what the strategies are going to be, in addition to the players suddenly turning on each other. Okay. Very chaotic. Very evil dead. <laughs> very, very evil dead. And every once in a while, it's going to spawn deadites, which are represented by these miniatures, okay. which then come in these spawn portals. Okay. And they chase us down, they try to wound us, they make life more complicated, and every time you fight them, or every time they fight you, mm -hmm. there is a chance that you gain more corruption. Okay. So even if you are defeating them, you still might turn corrupted mm -hmm. as the game goes on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's very important, if the corruption deck runs out, the Deadites also win. Oh, perfect. So, <laughs> as a human, you have to be really it's very careful hard about for that. The humans to win. But, but you, I mean, uh, as the dead, Deadites are coming in, the game is forcing you to confront them. You yes. can't just sit back. You are going to have to take that oh, risk. Oh, it gets, it gets insane. Like, there, oh. are, there are lots of Deadite minis. I, we don't even have half of them out of the box. Okay. Well, and, and there's other things, too, that I would like to point out. Like, for example, we have different characters. Of course, mm -hmm. we have, you know, Ash the famous himself. Ash, who's mm -hmm. very strong and very good at attacking. Mm -hmm. there is. Hold these up here. Uh -huh. But then we have Annie, who's not so great at attacking, but if you notice, she's actually very, very good at defending. Her virtue means she is unlikely to gain corruption cards. Way to go, Annie. Unfortunately, <laughs> Ash is not so good at that. Yeah. That's not supposed But he can to. kick some serious buttons. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, come on. But anyway, that's the flow of the game is you move around, you draw events, it spawns the undead, you can lay barricades, force them to come through the windows to try to slow them down, okay. hack them up, but you're trying to get the pages to seal the portal before right. you run out of time. It sounds like everything in the game is designed to just ratchet up that tension notch by notch. Non-stop. Oh, Absolutely. yes. Because remember how I said... He doesn't have to reveal that he's a deadite until he attacks us. Right. He might collect <laughs> a bunch of corruption cards, mm -hmm. and then he attacks me and reveals that he's a deadite. And then he gives me a corruption card. Ooh. Are you going to believe me when I say, no, no, he gave me a human card? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, everything, this, this game... Is, is mean, but, yeah. <laughs> but oh, yeah. in, oh, yes, in a delicious mean. way. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Very, it's very mean. The, the playthrough oh. video that we made for this, uh, that we put onto the Kickstarter a while back, um, it was we would we would reveal our cards to the audience, but not to the to anything else. And so the audience knew what was going on. So it was kind of like a picture-in-picture -picture, uh, playthrough. But you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a quick, fun, crazy game. You can mm -hmm. get through it in an hour or so or less. Uh, it's a good little cafe game, good to have a few drinks with, and uh, lots of delicious plastic with it. Mm -hmm. um, big, big it, plastic movies. Oh, yes. oh, yeah, there are a couple of things that I do want to call out before we move into like the, the final end bit. Sure. We do have specialty dice, which, true to Evil Dead, have Ooh. chainsaws for successes mm -hmm. and well deadite skulls for failures. Mm -hmm. um, also, in the, the core game, we have some very legendary bosses, such as the tree. Mm-hmm. And Applehead. Oh, but that's not Applehead, Tommy. Um, um. At least, I should say, <laughs> that's not Applehead by himself, because, because he also hands. has two very large hands that come out when Applehead winds up getting summoned. <laughs> so Appledead is represented by three different three, three, miniatures, three. all of which you have to deal with. Yeah. Why, Chasco, you've thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So Now, that's in the base game. Mm -hmm. We also have an extras yes. pack, which comes with additional miniatures and cards for them, mm -hmm. oh. such as uh, Flying Deadites, okay. uh, Undead Deer, <laughs> which you can also use in your D&D campaign. Oh, and this next one's great. And a little squirrel. Multiple undead squirrels. Oh. Yeah, who doesn't want an undead squirrel army to attack? I right? Know, right? Isn't that pretty? Yes. That, oh, so I'm in. Just, you, should, <laughs> you should have started with this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Excellent. So you mentioned that this was kind of a uh, resuscitated 
uh, Kickstarter and everything. Yes. So where is this in terms of um, you know retail release and, and kind of uh, everything else? Well, as far as I, as far as I know, it's uh, production is complete. There, I think we're in the fulfillment process. Uh, once the fulfillment process is complete, then it turns into a normal contract. So then Evil Dead will go into retail. Mm -hmm. uh, so support your local gaming stores. Head on out. Uh, I believe solicitation has begun. So your local gaming stores will get it. I, I'm not familiar with the exact Q2, quarter two, from the whispering yes. winds yeah. off camera. We have secret information. We have secret information from the right. Yes, go. Go for Tom. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, so Q2 is when uh, we plan to release it into the wild. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that will only happen once fulfillment is complete. And yes. we do have uh, multiple thousands of people. I think at this point, like, probably close to 12,000 people are deserving of this game. Uh, seven or eight thousand of those original backers who lost out are are happy, and we did this. You know, the board game community is strong thanks to thanks to groups like Board Game Geek keeping a, a, a solid um, you know reality for, for for board gamers to speak and forums to understand. But this worked out in a way that really helped the community. I think it, I think it put a lot of faith in Kickstarter again, put a lot of faith in 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 gaming in general, put a lot of faith in our companies. We didn't just do it as a marketing thing. It was actually like a, something that we wanted to do because yeah. integrity is an important part of our brand. So I, I mean, I really do think that we like quite seriously. I personally want to take a moment to thank all of the fans and thank oh. you know Board Game Board Geek Geek's for promoting and like having the forums and everything because this was one of those campaigns that. Like, you know how sometimes there's campaigns that are going to happen no matter yeah. what happens on yeah. Kickstarter? Yeah. This was one where we legitimately had an extremely high goal yes. because we wanted all the 000. original backers to get a game for free. Nice. So it was the total print run of all those backers, the costs of producing the game outside of the donated costs of Jasko's margins and Lynn Vander's design margins was all donated. Even the, the royalties of the licensor, everything was donated until we reached the point that we resuscitated all of the old backers and it worked it we, we scraped by it worked but uh and now we have a super good cool quality game that we hope will entertain you guys so thank you gamers because that's awesome it's fantastic Yo. community groovy yeah awesome really is. and oh last question i had is um is the expansion extras pack coming out at the same time as this or is it going to be staggered Yes, I believe it's coming yeah, out of the same right. That was my wow. response. Wow. Come to the right, and it's like, my head turned right, left, and then yes. <laughs> it's neck snappingly good. It's neck snappingly good. <laughs> and now we know who the dad I did. I'm just, I need to get over it. I already am a dad. <laughs> all right. Oh. On that note, thank you guys for sharing all of this with us. Oh, thank you and, for letting us be here. Oh, yes, our pleasure. And uh, hopefully the backers will be receiving it and uh, be able to enjoy this game that they've waited for for so long. In the meantime, take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Ruby.